Voltage cannot be measured directly in high power systems. It is impossible and impractical to connect high voltage systems directly to relays and meters. We must use a special transformer to step down these voltages to a safer value. This special transformer is called as potential transformer or simply PT. Standard voltmeters can then be used to measure this voltage. PT transforms voltage to safe value. Normally it's 110 volts. This voltage can be fed to low rating meters and relays in the control room. PT is always connected in parallel with the circuit, unlike CT which is connected in series. That's how the PT is connected. The primary of the PT is connected to the line on which we want to measure the voltage. The secondary of the PT is connected to either a voltmeter or a relay. The structures of a CT and PT in a substation are quite similar. Here is how to differentiate between a CT and a PT. As a CT is always connected in series with the power line, therefore it has two primary terminals that are clearly visible on both sides. The main line connects from one terminal and goes out from the other. Whereas in a PT there is a single terminal above the main compartment which is connected to the main power line through a dropper. Next we explain the structural composition of PT. There are four major components of PT that is core, primary winding, secondary winding and insulation. Core is an important part of a PT. The core is built up of sheets of laminated magnetic material such as iron or steel operating at low flux density so that magnetizing current is small. Primary winding is wrapped around the core. As there is high voltage on primary side of PT and hence low current, therefore thin conductor is used on primary side. Similarly, secondary winding is also wrapped around the core. As there will be higher currents on the secondary side of PT because of low voltages, therefore thicker conductor is used in LV windings of PT. As the PT is a step-down transformer, so the number of turns in secondary winding are very less as compared to primary winding. The working principle of PT is based on Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. When alternating current passes through a conductor, a magnetic field is generated. When a high AC voltage is applied to the primary windings of PT, an alternating magnetic field is produced in the core. This magnetic field induces voltage in the secondary windings. The primary and secondary of the PT are electrically isolated but magnetically coupled to each other. The secondary voltage of PT depends on the turns ratio of the PT. In a typical high voltage PT, the turn ratio is normally 1000 ratio 1 or even more. So, the number of turns on primary side is much more, whereas there are very few turns on the secondary winding. The secondary voltage of PT is normally 110 volts. The equation for PT is given as Voltage on primary side divided by voltage on secondary side is equal to number of turns on primary side divided by number of turns on secondary side or voltage on primary side will be equal to voltage on secondary side multiplied by NP by NS. Here NP by NS is called the turns ratio. So by detecting the secondary voltage Vs with a standard low rating voltmeter, the voltmeter automatically multiplies it with the turns ratio NP by NS to give us the high primary voltage VP. That's how a PT looks like. That's the primary terminal of PT which is connected to the main power line through a dropper. A high power capacity conductor connects the primary terminal with the PT compartment at the bottom. In the bottom compartment the main core assembly is installed. First the secondary LV winding is wrapped around the core. After that insulation is added on the secondary winding. Above the insulation the primary HV winding is wrapped. The insulation helps to prevent any risk of short circuit between primary and secondary windings. The cable from HT terminal of PT is connected to one end of the primary winding. The other end of primary winding is connected to the neutral. Leads are fed from the LV winding to the secondary terminal box from where we take out necessary connections and get the output. In case of multiple secondary winding cores, multiple leads are taken out to the terminal box for further necessary connections. The high power cable is covered with insulated cover for safety and further covered with porcelain insulators for providing extra layer of insulation and safety. The PT is filled with oil for insulation and cooling purpose. The oil can expand due to high temperature and load. So an extra compartment is provided at the top to accommodate the expansion of oil. The body of PT is grounded using an earth terminal at the bottom. Always remember that secondary terminals of a PT should never be shorted. Under normal conditions, 
the impedance of the secondary side of PT is very high and acts as an open circuit with negligible currents. However, if the secondary terminals are shorted, the PT will try to maintain its secondary voltage. In a try to maintain the voltage, there will be flow of high currents through the secondary terminals which will become higher and higher. This huge amount of current will ultimately burn the coil and can also result in severe shock. To prevent this loss, a fuse is installed on secondary side. In case of any short circuit on secondary terminals, the fuse operates and opens the circuit, hence preventing any further loss. Some of the major applications of potential transformer are PTs are used to measure high voltages. They are used for protection purposes specifically in substations. They are used for baying purpose and they can also be used in synchronization of generator and feeder. Thanks for watching the video. Keep in touch for more such informational videos.